Hello guys and welcome back to my 3D platformer tutorial series in Unreal Engine 5. In the second video, we are going to be working on the damage system so that the player can actually get damaged and die and also the player will have health. So before we start, do not hesitate to hit the like button and subscribe and let us go immediately. So first we are going to be starting by going to the player character blueprint so that we can actually make the player health variables. So just hit variables plus and create a new variable called current health. Change the variable type to float and we want to add another variable. This one is going to be called max health. This one will be the maximum health that the player can have. Of course, there is a way to avoid making two health variables, but this is definitely the best way, I think. So just change the variable values to 100 for both. And then you want to go to the event graph and we are going to be creating a brand new set of nodes. So get both current health and max health and we want to just try decreasing the health so that we can kill off the player. So we are going to be creating a brand new node. Just type input one and you should find that node. Then from the current health, drag out and type minus and you want to subtract the value from the current health. So get set the current health by dragging it and then connect it like this. You can also delete the max health. We do not need it yet. So yeah, just connect it to the one. So now we are gonna be setting the health every time we press one, but you wanna select all of those nodes and right click, collapse them to a function, and a function is something that you can reuse over and over again. So name, name the function subtract health and you can see that this zero output you can or input you can actually connect it to a black space in the subtract health node and that will let you decide how much you want to subtract every time you use the function so save compile and go back and you can see that the output or input actually sorry is over here set it to 25 and then you want to get current health and get max health and then we actually don't need the max health. So in the video, I got it by accident. Anyway, you want to check if it's less than or equal to and connect it to a branch and then connect it after the subtract health. You know, if we are less than or equal to zero, then we want to die. So quit game if it's true. And if it's false, we are going to be print stringing so that we can figure out how much our current health is. So this one will show us how much current health we have. You have already learned that in the first part. So anyway, test it, press one and take a look at the upper left corner. You can see that it works. So make sure your blueprint looks like this for now, but we are going to be changing this later on. So anyway, select all of those that do not have a function and change them to a function called check death. So this will check if we are dead or not. And you can reuse this every single time you want to check your death in any different blueprint. Now that we have done that, what we want to do is we want to create an actor that will be decreasing the player's health over time. So basically it's kind of like a lava or spikes, basically something that will damage you every time. So in opengamer.org, I found this spikes thing and I downloaded it and exported it. And then I organized my props folder so i made a folder for the coins and then i made another new folder for the spikes and i imported the spike by dragging it into the engine and import all then i made the material the material is basically just the texture nothing special i do not care about how it looks i just want something to test with and that is the mindset that you should have when you are prototyping your game anyway we put these spikes in and test them but we can see that they are huge we are not going to be using them as a static mesh so you want to create a brand new blueprint class which is an actor and this actor we are going to be calling it bp spikes then you want to go and add a static mesh 
in the components tab you can just call it spikes or whatever your actor is change the static mesh to the spikes mesh that we have imported and i changed the size of them because they were huge i decreased them to 0.5 to 0.25 and yeah you can see that they are huge spikes i actually duplicated the actor because the middle looks empty and if the player fell in there it wouldn't be convincing so i duplicated it and changed the size to 0.1 for the one that will be inside and you can see that the thing is fully spikes now and the player just cannot avoid it and it will look convincing if the character falls in there so you want to add another component which is going to be any type of collision you want but for me i'm just using a box collision for this basically if you touch this box you will be killed or you will lose some of your health so um yeah just adjust the size the location of the box it's a personal preference for you so basically it's gonna be based on what mesh you are using for the damage actor and yeah you just want to adjust it now go to the event graph with the box collision selected right click go to events and find the on components begin overlap also you want to add another event which is on component and overlap the other actor should be the instigator so get instigator and then cast to third person character now you can actually connect the object of the third person character straight into the other actor but I'm, i just use instigator because it's what i'm used to when i'm working on multiplayer games you know it's just nice to have it anyway from as pp third person character you want to drag out and look for the function that we have made which is subtract health so basically after you subtract your health if you are still inside of the spikes you will lose some health after this delay so right click on the duration promote it to a variable and this one you have to call it duration before damage or any name that you want but do make sure that it is a float but you know we have a problem here because once you enter the spikes even if you exit you will keep hurting we will fix that so you create a brand new variable which is going to be a boolean and this one you want to call it touching spikes or any similar name and you want to drag it in set and connect it to the cast so this will happen after the collision component touches the character and you will set it to true you will also do the same when you leave when the overlap ends so now you have a way of telling if the character is still touching these spikes create a branch after the delay and we will check if we are touching these spikes if it's true we will subtract health again and if it's false we will not do anything place it inside of your game and i did place a few of those you know it's starting to look very cool and nice kind of like a platformer which is exactly what we need and i think i over exaggerated with those a little bit i added way too much of them but hey, they are cool, they do not take any performance from the game. So go there, test it, you can see that there is no damage, why is that? Well, first of all, you have the collision problem. We don't want to collide with these spikes, we want to go through them. And that is just a matter of personal preference. So go to the static mesh, remove collision, and um, yeah, just go there and test it. And you can see that we do touch it, but we do not get hurt. Why is that? Well, I think there are two reasons. First reason is we didn't actually check for death and the print string is inside of the check for death function. So from as third person BP character, check for death and connect it after the subtract health. So go there, you can see that the health actually decreases when you are standing there and it actually decreases even more if you walk on the spikes so i do like that effect and i'm gonna keep it anyway go to the check for death function and before we quit the game we also want a print string and we are going to be calling this one um we are going to be typing inside of the string 
you are dead or something like that or you have died and we are going to be disabling the player input instead of quitting the game so this way we will like you will not be kicked out of the game right away but you know you cannot use delays inside of the functions so that is a problem we cannot really quit the game after a few seconds so also instead of quitting we will now set the visibility of the player mesh so get mesh set visibility and the visibility is going to be false so we are going to be converting this function into a custom event and custom events are not the same as functions because one they work better with multiplayer two they can have delays so after set the visibility delay create a delay and connect it to the quit game the delay it can be any value you want i recommend five or ten seconds and also there is an issue over here because we converted the function to a custom event so if you just go and compile it should work same as before so this is what my blueprint looks like right now make sure yours looks the same and you can just edit it if we go any further go to the spikes get hurt and lose and you can see that it actually works and you do get kicked out of the game after the delay ends so anyway guys i really hope you enjoyed this part so if you guys have enjoyed the video do not hesitate to hit the like button and subscribe if you are watching this on youtube and not on patreon and if you want to watch the full series on patreon it's going to be there fully complete and without ads so if you want to see that go and check out my patreon currently it is the only series i have there but i want to do like more bit by bit and yeah i will see you in the next video take care have a great day and bye